into the den of lions, but we will not be shaking. Amen. It might not be a lion literally, but so my disturbances at home that seem to be lions in our life. How do we face it? Reality, we patient, work in character for our good. He says a man's gate will bring him before great men, but it's his character that will make him to stay. The gift is you didn't do anything about it, but it's your character that you have to work on it. At the end of the day, love is what is going to control us in heaven. If we don't love ourselves, can we stay in heaven? Let's be real. You don't know anything about love. You're always hating. Being pride, proud, everything controlling us. And you want to go to heaven. Hello. Hi. Am I scratching some surfaces? So we better practice love here. We better practice containing ourselves here. Some people, yesterday, we were at one of pastor's friend birthday party and the wife talked very good about the husband but in the end she was saying please if the, it, it was her upbringing and people you know if you don't know certain things you might assume so I think in her church she's very reserved she doesn't go to people and maybe people doesn't come to her because she was trying to explain that don't get me wrong or don't be offended because that's my upbringing that that was so strict to an extent that when she's doing something and her dad tends to see that thing it means that's the end of her life that particular day she's doomed that one one shout one scream or one look of the father will, 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 will make her very cold she just go to her bedroom sobs and she sleeps she cries and she sleeps that is all that she knew and now the husband is an elder in the church she's on the leadership front <laughs> but she needs to work on her character so people are coming from different backgrounds people are coming from different aspects of life but we are all aiming for growth because God is taking us from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Are you prepared to see the glory of God in another level in your life? Work on your character. Your gift will bring you before great men, but it's your character that will make you to stay. You have all the talents and we can see you at church. Is that character? That's not character. Because you need to be in the presence of God so that people will draw the wisdom that God has given you. But if you are not there, you are not profitable. Amen. Amen. The omniscient God, the foreknowledge of the God that we say, His ways are so deep. We will not understand Him until we read the letter. Until we are familiar with the word of God chew it swallow it let it be part of you and that is where revelation come we are meeting here every Friday when we come in new revelation is coming every day and I'm thinking what kind of God is this if I'm not sitting in his presence I wouldn't hear this he says our, 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 uh, he says people were baptizing for dead people I've, I've never even heard anybody explaining or discussing that issue in the Bible. It came up. And it was being explained. Writing notes, I was just writing it down because I've never heard it before. What about if I go somewhere, a pastor's wife and some, that question comes up. How am I going to answer? But because I was there, I listened and I learned. Amen. I was behind the scene. I was, I, I was telling this group of girls that when I was about 10 years old, I was in, we were in the Methodist, you know, the pre, big prison worship team. But there are times our prayer master would do service of sons 
So Sunday evening, he would prepare us about six months. When I started choir, the choir master just picked me at the age of 10, 11, 12. He said, you are going to sing sorrow. My God. I can't even imagine. At 12 year old, how can I sing solo in front of thousands? Mother, this just was a big church. And they will put you there, sing to the people. And you can imagine. But God was shaping us. I'm always saying one prayer that God, you know, answered my prayer. I just love to marry a pastor. And, and God answered that. And I was thinking to myself, I didn't know, you know, the dynamics. I was just put there as a pastor, so I have no training, no nothing. But God is infinite wisdom. He has a plan. He has a purpose. And he will make us to get there. So please put your heart at rest. There is nothing new under the sun. What you are going through, we've all gone through before. Don't keep secrets. If you are bothered, if you are worried, that's why we are there. God has put us as mothers, as fathers, as leaders, to lead us and usher us, to be a signpost, <laughs> make good use of it. And you congregation to encourage us because we go through a lot. I can't stand here and tell you what I'm going through. But if God touches your heart, don't hold back. Amen. Amen. So that we'll be a blessing to one another. I pray that every word that you have heard today, it will not be a letter, but it will be a spirit. It will come from God himself. It will make you unsettled until you do something about your life, your plan and purpose that God has for you. As you take action, as you trust the word of God, as you put it in practice, you shall be promoted. You shall be on top and never be need. Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life because you've honored the word of God. God will replenish you. Your going out and your coming in will be exceptional. Among your peers you will stand out. Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Your children will rise up and call you blessed. Blessed and highly favored. The devil is a liar. Don't believe the lie of the enemy. God has a better plan for you. He says, I've loved you. I've known you. I've called you. Even when you were like a black cloth in your mother's womb, I knew you. And this is the God that we say. He calls us as sons. And we are his people. Covenant people. If you have covenant with somebody, it's not easy to break up. And this is this God that we serve. This is this God that we obey. Every promise is in the way. Begin to make good use of it. It shall be a blessing to you. And the Lord bless his way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord some praise. Let's give the Lord some praise. Let's appreciate the woman of God. Let's appreciate the woman of God. Let's appreciate the woman of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The omniscient God. The all-knowing God. Are we blessed? Yes. What we say to the woman of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We thank God for his insight. We thank God for his omniscience. I think all of us will take something from it. We are all going through things that probably we don't know how it will end. Actually, we all don't know how it will end. That's the truth. But we trust that God is in full control. Amen. Amen. So you will see that people went through a lot of difficulty. Joseph was sold into slavery. You came here. Yourself. You bought your own ticket, made your own passport, decided the country you wanted to go to. Look at how many countries are in the world. 
you decided I'm coming to UK. Amen. Amen. Joseph didn't have that. He was sold into Egypt. He didn't decide I want to go to Egypt. No. They decided we are going to sell you. And the country we want to sell you into is Egypt. That's it. But even that, God had a plan. Egypt is exactly where God wanted him to be. Amen. Amen. So even when you think you are being mistreated and things are not going, you have to know that it's God that we say. But you have to be in his way. That's the key. You have to be in his way. When you are in the will of God, all things work together for you. For those who love God and are called according to his purpose. One thing I say is that we are all beneficiaries of the suffering of other people. All of us. We are beneficiaries of the suffering of others. We are saved through the suffering of Jesus. Both of the letters in the New Testament you read was written, written from prison by Apostle Paul. But he couldn't go to the churches to preach, so he had to write them a letter because he was in prison. That is what you are reading today. You are being blessed. It is somebody suffering that caused him to write. And today is a blessing. Do you think when he was writing, he thought 2,000 years from now, people will still be reading my letter to the Corinthians? Mm -hmm. No, he was just writing the letter to the Corinthians. But look at the wisdom of God. Yes. That pain has kept his name up to today. We are still reading okay. his letters. <clears throat> so what is your pain going to produce? Not just for you, but for generations to come. The scripture says that for Mary, a sword will pierce your soul. Mary suffered, didn't it? Have you all of us benefited? Yes. So we have to understand that don't let us avoid pain. I don't and I'm not talking go and walk yourself into pain. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about pain that God brings. Not our own mistakes that lead no. Something that God takes you into. You know that God can take you into a battle? Yes, you are not looking for a battle. God will walk a street, a fight. Do you think when David went to give food to his brothers, he was looking for a fight? No, he just went to deliver food. He was not looking for a fight. God orchestrated a fight for David. A fight he was not looking for. It was that fight that made David. David. From that day, his life changed. All the women started singing about it. When the women sing about you, there is trouble. <laughs> when the women sing about you, Saul will chase you. <laughs> From that day, David suffered. After that song, eh? <laughs> but that was even that suffering was also what a part, part of the plan of God. You will say, ah, why did these women sing? If they kept quiet. But it was all part of it. Amen. Amen. So let's trust God. This, uh, this message is a powerful message because um, it's a message of faith, of, of, of just knowing that this God that we serve has total power. It's everywhere and knows everything. And you have to train yourself to come to that knowledge. You have to practice. And then come to that place where you know beyond the shadow of the doubt. This God is with me. 
there's nothing he can turn around. Yes. And at that point, God will use you. Because the things that will make you afraid, you are no longer afraid of them. And then God will give you serious assignments. But he knows now you can risk for him. You can take risk. Amen. 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 So we thank God for this word. I want us to just lift up our hands whilst you are seated. And I want you to pray for yourself and pray that God will open your, your, your mind. He, he, will, he, will, he will give you this revelation that he's an omniscient God. There is nothing he doesn't know about you. There is nothing going on in your life that he's not aware. There is no suffering. There is no pain that God is not aware. God is aware of everything. God is aware of the discouragement. He's aware of the disappointment. He's aware of the things that should have gone this 